Goedemiddag. For those that are Dutch, for me it's a home match this time. Uh, my name is uh, is Frans and I'm the founder of uh, of Dupe. So it's interesting. In Holland they always say Dupe, do but it's Dupe, Dupe. Um, I brought a friend of uh, of mine. If I know how this works, which button do I have to push? The big green one, right? So this is my friend uh, Marwan. So Marwan is a is a software engineer, and as you can see, he loves his Samsung phone. In fact, uh, uh, WhatsApp and uh, Facebook are his favorite apps. And Marwan is is middle class, so he has most of the things that you and I have except for one. He doesn't have a bank account. And that means that he's cut off from the financial services that we take for granted. And he's not alone. In, uh, in Egypt, where he lives, 90% of the population is unbanked. Worldwide, there are 2 billion people that have jobs, but no bank account. So why is that? Well, the reason for this is that the average job in a country like Egypt pays $6,000 a year. And with the banking infrastructure as it stands today, this is an unprofitable banking customer. So they left unbanked. And people like my friend Marwan are paid a salary in cash every month in envelopes of cash. And they keep it in their pocket or at home, hoping not to get robbed. They stand around in queues because they have to pay for everything in cash, like electricity, their mobile phone, and the cable subscription. Now companies, sorry, um, the internet, by the way, is, is just a place to visit for them, right? They can't buy anything online. Um, for companies, they feel the unbanked problem acutely. Since both their customers and their employees are unbanked, they have to manage huge amounts of cash. And this can cost them up to 25% of their revenue. So the big question is, how can we disrupt this industry? How can we help people like Marwan to get a bank account? Now, there have been many attempts to break that cash cycle. Most of them start with the consumer. We at Dupe, we take a different approach. We start with the corporate. We use payroll to bank the unbanked. How we do that? Well, our solution comes in three parts. The unbanked problem begins when people or when companies have to pay salaries. We decided to be in the middle of that transaction between the company and the employee. So we built a cloud-based ma employee management system that helps companies to manage the entire payroll process from onboarding employees to uh, calculating salaries and making the actual disbursement. The second part of our solution is the Dupay account, which comes with a prepaid debit card. So we open Dupay accounts for those employees that don't have bank accounts. So now companies can pay all their workers electronically. Employees that have a Dupay account can go to any ATM and pull out the cash if they want to. Um, and the rest of the money they can safely keep in their account. Um, the third part of our solution is a mobile app for those people like my one that have smartphones. And as we heard today, the, the number of smartphones is growing spectacularly in uh, emerging markets. So we're linking the app to the card, uh, and that allows them to check their balance anywhere, anytime. Uh, they can send money to their friends, they can buy airtime. But that's just the beginning, because these people have to save. Right? They need to pay bills. They need to borrow when times are tough. We launched uh, our service in, in Egypt, and we built some great traction. Uh, these are some of the customs that we already have our platform, and you would recognize companies like Vodafone and, and, and Philips and uh, several embassies. So we start with our payroll calculation part. And we have uh, over 20,000 employees on that platform. And from uh, November, we started to uh, open uh, Dupay accounts. And uh, we have seen uh, a, a attraction. Uh, we are doubling every month, basically, uh, since then. Um, we started in Egypt for a single reason. That's where uh, my co-founder, As and I, 
uh, build significant enterprises. So I built the National Clearinghouse of Egypt, which is uh, e equivalent to Equins, I would say, here in, uh, in, in, in Europe. Uh, and as he was the uh, founder of the first uh, third-party uh, processor in, in Egypt. And we built a team now of, of 50 people that know how to build a bank from the ground up because that is exactly what we are doing. Yeah? We are building, building the bank of the future for these people, one that's simple to use, low-cost and mobile-based, yeah? one that takes these 2 billion people that have jobs with no bank account and turns them into profitable customers. We started in Egypt, but you know our ambitions are really global. So if you want to know more about us or you think you can help us move faster, happy to speak to you after the presentations. We are Dupe, and I promise you one thing. We will bank these two billion people. Thank you so much. Thank you, France. Um, let me kick off with a question. How easy was it to get over the regulatory hurdles and, and maneuver into uh, a market which is that was a tricky, vast and That was a tricky question, right? Yeah. So we were part of the uh, Barclays Accelerator program. Yeah. Um, and we were lucky to, to get Barclays as our sponsor bank. So we built a, a very a nice relationship with them. Uh, to get uh, the central bank uh, to convince them was rather easy, uh, also because of our background in, in Egypt. However, it took us 14 months to go <laughs> through all the hurdles with, uh, with Barclays. Um, so uh, that was the main issue. Uh, moving forward, uh, we don't see that much of, um, of an issue because we have that relationship with Barclays now, so we can expand to, to more markets uh, easily. We, you know, we, we, we have done that part. Uh, and we also have another bank, uh, United Bank for Africa, that we partner with, and they are in 19 countries. And we now also have a partnership with MasterCard, and you know we are investigating with them how we can uh, probably get our own license to do that. And is it important, as part of your business model, to have those larger relationships and larger partnerships with the established names? Well, the the thing is that um, you know. For us to work with, Master, uh, with uh, Barclays yeah. uh, was a big win. You know, it's a trusted name in Egypt. So, uh, you know, we ask companies uh, uh, to deposit money through us. So uh, the fact that Barclays is behind us is, is a big win. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is that Barclays um, has a lot of corporate clients that are referring to us because they don't want uh, to, to bank these uh, people. Mm -hmm. But they do a lot of corporate lending for, you know, for companies and then these companies say hey guys you have to take the cash out of the payroll and then Barclay mm -hmm. says you know I cannot bank them mm -hmm. and that's where a win-win comes yeah. so it's a very healthy relationship that yeah, we have with them France great presentation great mission um, I'm a bit confused though just in terms of business model because at the end it kind of looked like you're going to try and be a bank yeah whereas at the moment you're clearly going to think about making money in a different way. And I just, just it would help to explain kind of vision and economics, the business model now. Okay. Um, so the business model at the moment is that uh, it's a B2B. So uh, we sign up co uh, companies. Uh, we do their payroll calculation, and they pay us per employee per month. Uh, and if they open a due pay account uh, for the employees, they also pay us for that. So they pay us like half a dollar a month. And then obviously, you know, um, uh, we make money on the float, and the interest is a little bit higher in these markets than, than here in Europe. Uh, and you know, we have the, the normal uh, interchange fee uh, commissions and so on. Um, we see that as, as a beginning, because um, how we see ourselves is that, that we are building rails towards these customers. And uh, once we have these rails, we, we can uh, uh, offer all the kind of services, like you know, uh, lending, uh, like uh, insurance, like all the benefits, both from the corporate side and from uh, the retail side, I would say. So um, we don't have our own license, but we partner with banks. Uh, and, and for the banks in these markets, that's, that's a nice model because we have a much more interesting distribution model uh, than they have. They can never, yeah, based on what they have today, they cannot compete with us. 
so we, yeah, we use our platform to distribute those so, so services. Okay, great, thanks. Two questions, very short. One is, uh, <clears throat> I understand that banks have a lot of interest in, in, in partnering with, uh, with you, but uh, would MasterCard need you to do the same? First question. Second question is, uh, how important is, you think, the value added of uh, basically getting the customer one by one, you know, the, the whole, like, uh, employee onboarding part, which is extremely interesting and makes you unique, but this seems, uh, you know, from an external point of view, very hard to scale, you know, like chasing corporates one one by one. I, there are two different, question. two very different questions, but I hope you remind the first one in the meantime. Yes. So the first question was MasterCard, right? Um, so, um, well, they are the best ones to ask, right? We are part of their uh, uh, StarPass program, so out of 500 companies, they choose five. Um, uh, they have a mission of financial inclusion, and they see that the banks are not going, uh, you know, down the pyramid, and, and we do. So uh, for them, you know, they want to have as, as many MasterCard uh, clients uh, as, as possible. So, you know, it makes, it makes sense for them. Um, so... The, the second question, remind me. Just, you know, yeah, the scaling. So uh, that's a really interesting one, right? Um, I have two answers to that question. So the first answer is that we start with building these, what we see, communities. A company is a community, so uh, it's very good for the learning uh, because, you know, uh, uh, some of the people in, in the company are more educated and they can help the others because that always has been a big problem uh, within financial inclusion. But we foresee that you know, we will open our platform f uh, for consumers as well. But we first want to build this community uh, of, of that. Uh, secondly, scaling. Um, believe it or not, we, we only do digital selling, right? So we use Facebook, social media to, to sell. And you know, on a daily basis, we get a lot of inbound leads. And um, if you look, for instance, at the, at the US, uh, a company you probably know, Zenefit or Gusto, uh, you know, they succeeded in three years uh, to go to uh, over 30,000 uh, 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 corporates. So you can scale this. You know, you can scale this, but you have to use the digital uh, platforms uh, to, to do that. And we believe we can scale it. How many, how many markets as uh, receptive uh, as Egypt uh, you think they are? Uh, and, and by the way, really, I mean, uh, Vodafone paid their employees by cash before you, really? I was... Uh, the majority of them, 80%. Wow, okay. Yeah. And, and I mean, with Vodafone, um, we started to do the payroll calculation. So uh, they have 8,000 employees, and uh, they were using Excel to do the payroll calculations. So 99%, I would say, of, of companies in, in Egypt and I can some, tell some nice stories about that later, but they, they are using Excel. You can't imagine. Yeah. So how many more countries than Egypt do you think? Yeah, so how many uh, more countries? I mean, uh, it's, it, you know, if we primarily look, of course, at the emerging markets. So, yeah, it's, it's Africa, it's Southeast Asia, it's India, it's in, uh, Indonesia. But if this, what would be the second country you would attack? Uh, so we already have an office in, in Ghana. So, uh, but we, we see that as a hub for, for West Africa. Uh, we are looking uh, at Saudi Arabia. We are looking at, uh, uh, because they have a lot of migrant workers, we uh, are uh, looking at uh, India, uh, and that are the main markets that we are looking at right now. Yeah. I have a uh, three-pronged single question. Um, how dependent is your model on um, float and on interchange, A. B, how do you uh, educate and incent uh, consumers that are used to operating in cash to not run to the bank and take all of their money out as soon as they get the, uh, uh, the deposit onto their card? And uh, C, um, how important is uh, the um, merchant acquiring network in, to you in the markets where you're, where you're operating? In other words, have places that people can actually use their cards uh, and make electronic payments rather okay. than paying cash? 
So, uh, we, like I said before, we see um, uh, this as a first step to acquire customers, right? And um, for that, we are making, uh, we can make a nice profit and the interchange fee is minimum in it. The float is interesting, 25, 30%, I, I, I estimate. Um, but we see this, again, as, as a way to offer other financial services. Because the biggest problem that you see in emerging markets is that they have a need for financial services, but you need something where you can transact from. And you know that's something that, uh, that they don't have. And yes, we see a lot of wallets. I mean, every week there is a new wallet coming up, but it's uh, what we try to do and, uh, is to make the DuPay account the, the primary account of these people, you know, and that gives them then access to, uh, to all other uh, financial services. The second question. The educate, yeah. So education is 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 interesting, right? Um, um, uh, of course, a lot of people go to the could go to the ATM. Why? Because they don't trust it. Why? Because uh, um, you know we did we did an immersion research, uh, and one of the findings was not surprisingly, but the the woman is the CFO of the family. So if the man gets paid, uh, they run to the ATM and give the money not all probably, but give the money to the wife that manages the household. So if you don't include uh, the woman in, in the equation, it's not going to work. So that's why you know, we are working on a partner card or that they can open an account as well. So you know, it's these kind of things. The other thing is that in a company, uh, you have, it's a community, right? They are friends, so they can educate. And uh, yeah, a mobile phone is a very important, I had a smartphone, now I can see the money, you know, and, and uh, 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 people can get more trust. They can see, okay, I take the money out and I can see on my uh, mobile, uh, mobile phone that, you know, it's no longer, uh, of, yeah, that is deducted from, from the money. So we think that b uh, trust can be built and we have some nice examples of that. I mean, we can talk about the revolutions that happened in Egypt and some game changes that happen because of that in the financial industry. Because, you know, uh, we, we believe that the best way to reach financial inclusion, uh, it maybe doesn't sound nice, is by enforcement. You have to give the people, you know, to, to really make them use it. And by making you, uh, them use it and giving them a good experience, they will never leave you. Uh, we have a nice expression, but I will not use that here. It's a bit rude. Okay, I'm conscious that we are fast moving along with time. So thank you very much. Thank you so much.